I do think the bouncing ball is valid as a good first exercise. I think it's a good introduction to Maya and the whole concept of 3D animation and how it works. This is typically one of the first things that a student might do. They might set a key and there's a key in the middle where it does a big jump and we're gonna open the graph editor and you know we're gonna design these tangents we do a few of those or we cycle that so that we have got some magic animation and we've got a bit more cartoon with it and we're like wow we can just animate like this and this is great for something so simple like a bouncing ball the trouble is when you go to convert this to full-on character animation it can quickly just get wildly out of hand especially if you're working straight into spline like this imagine this but for 200 controls and i think sometimes people learn this way and they're like great i know how to 3d animate now and they sort of stick with this and then moving things around and experimenting but for me this is like learning polish before learning blocking maybe there's a better first exercise for people getting into animation. Why'd that background change? So I've got a cube here and a better way I think is to go in and set your tangent type to stepped. Stepped gives you the feeling of Spider-Verse or Puss in Boots. It's not on once. It's not playing at 24 frames a second. Essentially you can do this with a sphere. The reason I like to use a cube is because you have very clear lines and those are helpful for tracking spacing which is similar to what you do when you're animating a full character so the real purpose of this exercise is to get good at spacing so this will teach you to worry about your spacing separately from your timing the reason it's important to separate those things is because it makes it feel more like a 2d animation when you're flipping through your keyframes you're essentially giving yourself a sense of the spacing of your shot so having to manage that and timing at the same time and think about both is just overly complex. We may as well simplify, worry about the spacing and then do a timing pass later where we space out those keyframes as if you're scanning those drawings into a computer, saying to the camera to shoot this one for two frames, this one for four frames, this one for three frames, like a 2D animator would traditionally on paper. We can maybe start with a simple animation and let's say something similar to what we did with the bouncing ball we'll go up back down so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna work into that and create some breakdowns so let's give it some more life than that bouncing ball one it's a bit unfair to do this and then not do it for the bouncing ball but you know i'm biased let's go ahead and animate this i'm gonna start with a bit of an antic kind of maintain some volume going down but brilliant we have an antic pose and we have another key pose which is up here i want to now create an ease out using tween machine that'll do and ease into this pose let's ease out for three frames and then ease in and then i really want to spring out of that maybe even on one so let's do that on one and let's really favor the next key we're using tween machine and add some squash and stretch again just maintaining that volume now with this spacing i really want to show where i'm coming from and where i'm going to so let's stretch that and just bridge that space so it feels like a nice big pop off and then we'll just ease into the next key let's get this hitting the so if i just go to select the scale attributes let's get that easing to most of its final form there so that it doesn't all ease at the same time we're creating some difference and some some overlap essentially by doing that and let's create some more eases have a look through my keyframes so just flip between them using next key the hot key next key cool I think I'll just stay up there a little longer and then we'll start easing down. Let's just press shift and blend to the previous key. If you want, you can have these on hotkeys. I do have Tween Machine on hotkeys. So for example, that is favoring the next key, that's favoring the previous key. And I also have blends set to hotkeys as well. So Alt Q blends to my previous frame and Alt T blends to my next frame. So I can very quickly come in here and set a tween and then blend depending on how I want my spacing. So I can come in and flick between these, flick between my keys, much like a 2D animator would, much like Glenn Keane would when he's flicking between his drawings of a ballerina or Tarzan. Just seeing the spacing. And this translates well to when you're animating a full character. Looking at each part, seeing the spacing, seeing how it relates to each other. It's a very nice way to work. So let's continue using that out and let's just create a nice big smear frame here nice fun because you know there's a chance that animation can be fun 
a very small chance. <laughs> There's not. Animation is fun. And I think this way is much more fun than going in and sort of noodling in the graph editor straight away. So match the scale to that. Okay. And let's have a big hit frame, which is essentially similar to the antic frame, but let's squash it even more than that frame. So I'm just going to favor the next key and I'm going to have it actually, I'm just going to fully hit it. And we're going to create an overshoot here. So let's really squash that. Go crazy with it. Try and maintain that volume. Again, I'm just flicking between my keys here. And I just want to create another pose in between here where we overshoot the other way just to sell that impact. So I'm just going to go to the next key and then create an overshoot this way. Oops. So it feels like it's maintaining volume there. It's hitting that ground plane. And if I flick between, I can see how things are working. And I'm just going to create an ease into this pose so we hit that and then quite quickly get into this pose i'm just gonna again blend to neighbors using anim bot i feel like the line is bottom line where it's hitting is moving a little so let's just have that maintain this line here again i'm just flicking through and seeing what that line does and if it's moving around too much then i can just adjust that instead of going in and having look, a look at the graph editor and going well that needs to because we're scaling and stuff or we need to tweak this. I'm just doing it by eye. I'm just going in and flicking between these and seeing my spacing. And then I will create an ease out of this pose, this up pose, boom, very small ease out into the final pose, which I will ease into and just create a moving hold by easing into that. And I could continue to overshoot and make this, you know, really jelly-like and boom, 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 boom. But, you know, for the purposes of getting this done, let's do that. And now I can flick through my animation and read what's happening and it's making sense to me. And then I can play it back and see how it looks. Let's just move that fan line. And I feel like it's working pretty well. And we can just go in and say, I want to adjust this antic to be longer. We can just adjust the timing. And what's helpful about this, and one of the key reasons this is helpful too, is we don't have to go in and try and adjust things in the graph edit, try and offset things or delay things. And I know there's nothing to offset in this really other than the scale, but we can go through and see our spacing and then we can go in and move our timing later. So we're keeping our spacing and our timing separate, which is very important. And we can flick through much like Glenn Keenwood again, flicking through his drawings. And then we time it out later. We say, okay, this drawing is on twos. This drawing is on threes. This drawing is on ones. So I could, you know, decide that actually I want another frame in here, or I want this to just not be so crazy on ones and see how that feels, how that timing feels. And actually I want it to really pop out of there. So I will leave it for now. And maybe on the way down, I want to do something similar. So move these keys after it to happen a bit sooner. And we're feeling a bit snappier. And this is obviously a very simple bounce or a jump in this case. And we've given this inanimate object some life, which is pretty cool. And we can go in and we can do the same thing with rotation. So say he does a little jump and go in and track what's going on here. Say we want to do this same thing. And there's, there's no reason that this is like purely a, a translation thing, you know? And obviously this is actually easier if you put a texture on it to track that rotation. I'm just going to do it to here so I don't have to reanimate the whole thing but if we stick a texture on this I'm going to assign new material and just put a lambert on there and I'm going to choose the first thing okay we can go check we can go let's go mountain and we're animating a, a little mountain in a cube shape and it just allows us to see that rotation and it doesn't get lost when things rotate too much because everything is just one color and completely flat the colors of each side tend to blend into each other so i'm not really sure if this is a sponsor because it's sort of my own thing but i've been working on something and i'm really excited to announce keyframe coach you can go there and order a review i'll take a look at your animation through sync sketch upload a recording onto the keyframe coach youtube channel which of course it would be very much appreciated if you went to and subscribed so go and check that out if not subscribe to the channel leave a like i think we're nearly at 3.5k subscribers right now which is crazy thank you all for your continued support keyframe coach check it out and let's get back to the video so we can get rid of this animation and we can work on a different exercise. So let's set some keys where maybe I'm traveling to this point, right? And maybe I want to end up 
rotated like this too. So I'm going to think about a breakdown for this. And because it's so different, I'm just going to start with that initial pose. But I think I'm essentially going to rear up. I think that would be cool. And rather than doing anything fancy with the pivot, which I, I could do and would make my life easier, it's a similar job to just track it in space. I'm looking at this point here, flicking between my keys and seeing if I can't just get that by eye. So again, I will create an antic. Let's squash him down again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And then I'm going to, and then he's going to go forward. So that's my planning for this shot. Again, I'm just going to create an ease. I'm going to use my hotkeys for this just to get it done quick. Just make sure you have a key set on every frame on all your keys. So I'm going to create my eases and I'm going to do my timing later just to show you that we're only focusing on spacing here. So I'm just going to create an ease into that. And if I flick between them, I can see that he's easing into this pose. Okay, so we're going to ease out of this pose, create an ease. And because I got that object where I needed it in this pose and worked hard to make sure that that point was matching, then this is not so hard to match. This one just requires a little bit of movement here and there. And actually, because I scaled it, the pivot changed a bit, but I reckon this would now just tween pretty well. Ease into our final position. Let's create just like a little bit of offset so everything's not just easing at exactly the same time. So we'll get up there and then rotate and then do a slight rotation. And it's okay to change your keys once you set them, just flicking through and seeing a spacing. Let's get want to do a different tween for the rotation. Oh, it feels like he's rearing up now. And then we want to get over there. And I think something cool would be to, well, obviously we're doing a big anticipation. We're doing like an anticipation into an anticipation to then go over there. So let's do something fast in the middle. I'm just going to set a breakdown. We'll do a big smear. I want it to almost feel like he's, all that weight is like coming down, which is then like sending him, for, sending him forward. So I, I don't want it to be an like an over arc here. I just want it to feel like it's pressing into the ground and then through to that next pose. Uh, let's create an ease, see what it gives us. Okay. Just want to maintain the scale for now. And I also want to maintain that translation. So that it still feels like he's pivoting, saying he, it's a cube, but we're giving it life. It feels like it's pivoting on that point. Okay, move our keys along just to give us some space. A nice ease out of that. And we want to create our final ease in. I'll tell you what, we'll do a nice big jump up before the big landing. That would be cool. So we want to ease into that. This texture is actually not <laughs> amazing for kind of doing that rotation because it's just the same on all sides. But we'll see what it gives us. Okay, we want to create some more eases into this final pose. This uh, up pose. I'm going to ease down. Look at that rotation as well. So I've looked, gone through, looked at what the translation is doing. Feel happy with that. And then I want to go through and look at what the rotation is doing. So it's the same as doing overlap on the full human character. I don't know why, I just want to squash that a little. And let's go full cartoony with this landing. And you can just stretch them a bit. I want to feel like I'm coming back down on this back point here. I'm just doing this to camera because, well, it's easier. And I'm essentially treating this as a 2D animation, flicking between my drawings like Glen Keane and creating some animation. So. Again, let's just create another key in here, another overshoot. Okay, so I feel like if we flick through, we have a lot of poses in here. Still need a couple of eases. Boom. Okay, so let's just create one more key in here. And let's actually let's have that go something like this. Ease into this final pose. So as if we're getting there and then doing our squash after. Yeah, let's basically get there. Again, this is the pivot. So we're just going to flick through, track that. Gonna add a little more squash in there. So it's fine to put in tweens and for them to be wrong, and then you flick through and then you see that they're wrong, and then you just adjust them. I wanna bounce out of that, so let's just ease into our final pose. Sorry, ease out to our final pose. And now we flick through. Okay, let's do some timing on this. Grab everything. I wanna ease out of that first pose a little slowly. Have some big spacing where we get into our first pose, which is this anticipation. Ease into that, ease out of that first pose, see how that feels. Can always come back and adjust later. And this definitely needs to be a longer hold than that. And we definitely want this one to be fast. I feel like we can maybe add one more key in here. Just another ease, a little adjustment for the rotation. Two, three, and the same on the way down. You want to think about parabolic arcs when you're doing jumps. Essentially, it takes the same amount of time to come up as it does when it comes down if you're relying on gravity might be a little bit not beginner friendly but essential for animation to understand parabolic arcs even if you don't think about oh yes parabolic arc the word itself just 
think about how things move. Don't like how stuck this is getting. I'm just going to tweak, make it more of a parabolic arc. And sometimes I'll just hit play on my timeline and see how that's looking. Okay, let's play that through, see how it feels. Okay, we're feeling a little bit laboured at the end, I feel. Boink. So I just want to push these together and see if that gives me something better. I don't know how it's easing up, I think. So let's get rid of this key, have it really pop into that final pose and just ease, moving hold to the end. Okay, that's feeling much better to me. So yeah, done a spacing pass and then moved on to a timing pass. And then we have a beautiful mountain cube, which is doing something. I mean, I didn't spend much time at all working through this and got something which is feeling like it's got some life. So not only does this not involve the graph editor at all, which to be honest is a process for, especially in feature animation, for when you're blocking, before you hit spline and before you go into polish, just getting in some work like this. I feel like it trains you to flick through your keys and see your spacing, which is just invaluable as an animator. It makes this 3D animation thing a bit more fun and feel a bit more like 2D, just flicking between your drawings. I can imagine I'm flicking between, much like Glen Keen. Don't know how many times I'll say that during this, but much like Glen Key, much like Richard Williams, much like all of the old masters. And that just helps to see your spacing. And then you get your timing later. So you're just doing your spacing and then you will then go and do a timing pass where it's like fresh and you can see your animation play for the first time. You just hit play and you go, okay, feel pretty good about that. I need to speed some things up or push some keys together rather than going in here and saying, yeah, maybe this, maybe this. But you can see that this animation that I've blocked would be able to have spline hit on it and it would be most of the way there. So, okay, we got some jank in here where I obviously didn't get the rotation right. You know what? I'm just gonna fix it by doing that. Fixed. Didn't even have to go in the graph at all. And we have a spline animation just from working on twos. You can apply this then to characters and to other types of animation. I think it's just a good way to learn and a good way to think about animation. To me, this is simpler. It helps you get better at refining your, your spacing and making your holds feel better. It's better for workflow because it's quicker. You don't have to go in and adjust curves and things like that. You just flick through, see what things are doing. Okay, that's not feeling great. Just tweak, give it a go, see what you think and check out Keyframe Coach if you want.